In Murray, I presume you back the borrowing to invest. Well, we've been saying that since 2010, that the government had to take a different journey, and that journey would have been to invest in infrastructure to be able to grow your way out of this problem. They promised, don't forget, to eradicate the deficit in 2015. They haven't done so. It'll be 70, nearly £70 billion pounds this year. And Stuart Hosey is absolutely right. We're now seeing what the Tory Brexit bed looks like, and we're all now having to lie in it. It's £60 billion pounds worth. It's growth down by... 2.4% over the next five years and indeed we don't even know what unemployment figures might look like. This is a real problem for the government. I do agree that infrastructure investment is the right thing to do. I'm glad he's now on that page. It's the same page we've been on for some considerable time but there's rocky, rocky roads ahead. But the UK people voted for Brexit. It is what it is and if you were in government you would have to deal with it too, Ian Murray. Well, Brexit means Brexit, it's what the Prime Minister says, but today's autumn statement actually shows us what Brexit actually means, and it means that our economy is going to be worse, it's going to be worse to the tune of 2.4%, the public finances are going to be worse, we welcome the additional infrastructure spending, but it's a drop in the ocean. Look, it's continuing along this austerity agenda, government departments are still being squeezed, cuts, cut, cuts seems to be the mantra, he hasn't put any money back in to helping disabled people, he's giving massive tax cuts to the very corporations that don't require them, his priorities are wrong okay. and he's now suffering from that today. Stuart Hosey, um, what would you have done differently in these circumstances? Well, what I said to the Chancellor today was the additional money he's made available over the entire forecast period is 1.5% of total spending. That is not the fiscal stimulus which the economy actually needs. He should have done more, but more importantly, he should have offered certainty today on Brexit. He should have said he's going to campaign for a soft Brexit. He should have explained to business he wants complete access to the market, tariff-free, maybe EEA membership. Instead, he abdicated responsibility for that, said next to nothing on Brexit, and then we find out some hours later but, how much this is going to cost. But, um, Stuart Hosey, on borrowing, would you have proposed even more borrowing? Well, I, you know, we wouldn't have started off from here. And I think this is the key thing. You know, we had figures today from the Chancellor that tell us the national debt will reach 90% of GDP. We were promised it would be 67% a few years ago. The whole last six years, the next three or four years, this austerity decade has been an unmitigated disaster. He needed to take real steps to really begin to fix that problem. He's moved a little, but to be uh, brutally honest, much of this is tinkering around the edges. Um, Stuart Ozzie, I know you're not a member of the, the Scottish Government, but if you were the Finance Secretary, um, how should this extra £800 million pounds, uh, that the Government announced today for the, the Scottish Government be spent? Well, can I say, first of all, I welcome it. It doesn't go anywhere near uh, recovering the 10% loss to revenue budget or the 16% loss to the capital budget over the last few years, but nevertheless, it's welcome. And what I would do, and I'm confident the Scottish Government will do, is to make sure that every penny of it is spent on capital projects to give us the biggest bang for our buck. Ian Murray, how, how would you spend this extra £800 million? Well, look, we've got a housing crisis in Scotland. It could go some way to building more affordable and social houses, get people back into work in those trades that are uh, reliant on house building. We should be spending on infrastructure such as broadband and 4G to make sure rural areas are connected. It's got to go straight into things that give us immediate economic development to be able to sure we can protect jobs, get economic growth out of this money, and as Stuart rightly says, get as much bang for that buck as we possibly can. Um, Stuart Hosey, what about the city deals? Every city in Scotland will now have a deal, or the prospect of a deal, could that not be seen as a bonus for being in the union? No, the city deals are being put together by teams and local authorities with their partners. I met with the Tay Cities deal team a few weeks ago. They're doing a phenomenal amount of work. Some of the money will come from the UK, a great deal will come from the Scottish Government. I think the credit for successful city deals okay. goes to the people on the ground who are putting them together. Ian Murray, city deals, good, good news for Scotland? Well, I won't be quite as curmudgeonly as Stuart Hosey. This is a partnership between the Scottish Government, between the UK Government and, crucially, local authorities. Edinburgh's city deal looks as if it's going to be signed. It's a great triumph for Andrew Burns, the council leader in Edinburgh, okay. and the senior officials there. It'll make a step change, but that's Scottish, UK and local authorities working together. Okay. We could be doing with seeing more of that. OK, Stuart Hosey and Ian Murray, thank you for joining us this evening.